the day after Christmas and we're here to make some jewelry together today. So first off, I hope you had a great holiday. I know my house is a disaster right now, so you can't see behind me, but it was a good time. We had kids, we had puppies, so lots of fun. Um, so it was a little bit crazy. <laughs> so I have this like nice little window right here where you, you don't see my chaos, but there is just a mess everywhere. So I think that means it was a good time and I think everyone had a good time. So I really hope you did too. I hope it was filled with a lot of laughter and fun. And I cannot believe that we are just a few days now until New Year's and then that's the end of 2023. So crazy, I hope it was a good year for everyone. I know I really enjoyed the last couple months, especially for me as a designer, because I have got to work with the really great other designers out there that the Art Beats team has brought on, like um, Sarah Lovecraft and Tammy Hahnemann, and then of course Becky Dahl. So if you've been watching these other shows, you've seen how great they are too. They're really fun to work with. And I love getting to collaborate with other designers. So, and I feel like this too is a collaboration. If you're joining me, we are live. So I can see your comments like, hello, Barbara, Merry Christmas to you too. It is really fun to be able to work with others. And I like these live shows because I get to interact and you guys can help dictate the design. You can tell me what you like, what you don't like. When you click the little heart button, I see little floaty hearts, which, let, which lets me know that you like what you see. So that's a fun way of communicating. You can also comment. So I see your comments, so that's nice. And then if you're over on another platform, let's say you're watching this on YouTube or you're watching this on Facebook, if you just click the link in the description, it will bring you over to artbeads.com forward slash live, which is where you can comment and I can see your comments. I can see your hearts. You can share. There's a little arrow button so you can share. Hi, Joe. Welcome. This is her first time watching. Thank you for joining us on December 26th on this day after Christmas. Welcome. So that's a few of the details about this show is you can comment, you can heart, you can share. There's also a little shopping bag icon that you can see on your screen. And if you click on that, it will show you everything I use in the show all at once. You don't have to wait for me to point it out. You can also then figure out um, some of the more details, like if you wanna know the color name or you wanna know the size or the price, or you wanna add it to your shopping cart, you can do it right from there as well. Oh, hi Deb, you're joining us too today. Happy holidays. I hope you had a good one with your family. Okay. That, I'm excited, you can tell I am like on a sugar buzz. So I apologize if I am talking a little bit quickly. We had so much sugar yesterday and I'm still nibbling on it this morning, I must admit. So um, I want to start to make the project that we're gonna do today. So today we are gonna be doing some wire wrapping of gemstones to make boutique inspired jewelry. So my earrings here are actually also wire wrapped but they use prestige crystals. So you don't have to just do this with gemstones. You can do it with any bead you like, but I really like doing with the gemstones because I see this type of jewelry in the boutiques and it's really expensive. And I like that I can make it myself. And I like that I can pick the gemstone I want. I can pick the wire color I want and you can really customize it. So we're gonna be making a bracelet. We're gonna be making a necklace and we're gonna be making a pair of earrings. So we have a lot that we're gonna be covering today using gemstones and wire wrapping, and then we're gonna add in a few other findings and components as well to really kind of bring that boutique feel into the home. All right, I'm gonna flip my camera really quick. You might see some of my mess, I'm not sure. So let me flip my camera really quick, and then we're gonna to start to do some designing. So, oh, my backyard you're seeing. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna position this a little bit closer so we can really see what's happening today. So if you wanna see anything more up close, let me know, I can, I can read your comments, which is great. So I have gemstones. So the ones that I'm gonna be using are these really pretty ones here. These are four millimeters and they are a, a jade. And so they are lovely different colors. It's a rainbow jade. And so I like that I could choose different colors out of this one strand. And I can see on my screen that a little box just popped up with it. So you could always click on that little box. It should be like a little product banner on your screen as well. And then you can learn more about it. Now you can also shop during this broadcast. You can add it to your shopping cart. You can do all of that good stuff and I will never disappear. You'll still stay with me. If you ever do miss anything, like you have to, 
step away for a minute, all these shows are saved as well. So you can always come back and watch them at artbeads.com forward slash live. Okay, so this is the one I'm going to use. I thought it went really pretty with gold. So I picked out some gold things to go with it. But really quick, I do want to show you some of the other options. You have really intense colors as well. So you can go with like a nice kind of a, a classic neutral, or you could do a really bright color. I love some of these as well. So it's really up to your personal taste. Those are all four millimeters. And I also pulled out some of this beautiful uh, purple gemstone here that is a six millimeter just to give you a, a nice size comparison because that's a nice thing about doing these videos and doing them live is we can see the size comparison because I know it can sometimes be a little bit hard to tell. Okay, so I've got my gemstones and I've done the chain already part of it, but I'm going to show you how to do it, but I wanted to get a little bit of a length done. Oh, hi, Anita from Johannesburg. Wow. Happy holidays to you. Okay, so we've got that. And what I want to do with this particular chain is I'm going to make a bracelet with it that I can combine with a couple different sizes of Rolo chain as well. So, you know, sometimes you go into the boutique and this whole theme was boutique inspired. And so you see one strand of gemstones and then you see a couple strands of chain. And so I'm going to show you how to make the gemstone chain and then how to connect this together to make a complete bracelet. So in terms of the wire I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using 24 gauge artistic wire. You can also use 26 gauge for this. You want to be able to do some nice little tight wire wraps. So I do like the 24 or the 26. You could do it with 22 as well. It is definitely doable. Um, I just like the delicate nature of the thinner wires with this particular project. So I'm going to be using the 24 gauge. I'm going to be using these pretty four millimeter beads. And then for my tools, I have wire looping pliers. So you've got one round nose and one concave, and they're going to save us a lot of time in this project. I have a couple pairs of chain nose pliers. My favorite are the Zeron because they've got this really nice fine tip and then a pair of cutters. So those are the only tools you're going to need for this project. And I'm going to pull off some of these because I like that they are all different colors. So I cut seven inches of this to begin with. So I have seven inches of my chain already cut and I did that for both. And I started to make my chain already, but I intentionally left so I need another link or two. So we're gonna line these guys up. So to make a link, what you're going to do is you're gonna cut off some wire. And I'm just going to get a little bit of this undone. And there's a little notch right here in your wire spool that you can go like this and just latch it so that it doesn't come undone. And I'm going to need more probably, but I'll just get more as well. Oh, Barbara, great question. So Barbara's asking, when will the fine tip pliers be back in stock? Uh, my best notion is it should be soon because we designers have been working with the product team and we have been telling them, especially these tools in particular, we love so much that we need to order more of them. So I know that they've got another order out there. So it should hopefully be soon. I know there's a few delays with the holidays for shipping and all, but hopefully these will be back in soon. Um, I assume you're talking about these ones here, the Zeron ones with the fine tip. Um, they are really great, and I know that they go out of stock pretty quickly after they come back in stock because they are so good, and, and we do use them a lot. So we have definitely let the product team know to, to order more of them. So um, we can't pre-order them right now um, on uh, artbeads.com, but um, that's something definitely would be something to look into if maybe there would be a pre-order function we could do in the future. That would be really cool but uh, I know that we're gonna get more of these in stock soon. So great question, thank you for asking it. I love it that I can see the comments and we can talk here as we're doing this. Okay, so I'm gonna cut about two and a half to three inches of the wire. And then what you wanna do is you're going to take your wire looping pliers and you're gonna go about three quarters of an inch down 
and you are just going to squeeze, bend your wire over, rotate it up to the top. Now, if this was the very first link I was doing, I would do the wire wrappings right now. So I think I'm gonna show you that because I'll always need in the, in the video today another first link. So what you do is you can either keep it gripped right here or you can switch and grip it with a pair of chain nose. I'm gonna to try to do it with just these pliers to show you how to do it because I don't think I've shown that in a video before. So you just keep it gripped and you do some wrappings with your fingers. And the 24 gauge is soft enough that you should be able to easily just do a couple nice wrappings with your fingers without stressing them too much. I know when I get down to like a 21 gauge or a 20 gauge, it starts to hurt my fingers a little bit to just uh, do a lot of wraps with them. Well, thank you for the hearts. It's good to see. It's nice to see that you're liking this. It is fun to design together. All right, so I tucked my wire end just by basically pinching the side of it to tuck it in. And now I have a loop with some wrappings on it. Now I'm just going to go ahead and pick up one of my gemstones and put it on there. So you've just got that right there. And hopefully you can see that. I'm sorry. I know it's like a cream colored mat and it's the cream colored bead right here. Okay. So now we're going to go to the other side and we're going to start it out the same, but we're not going to finish it the same way. Okay. So we're just grabbing it. There's a wee little bit of wire between the bead and the plier that just allows a space for your wrappings. Okay. Push it down, rotate it up crisscross, but at this point you need to link it to your existing chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slightly open this up and now I will link on the last chain link from the chain I already made and slip it on there. So you see how those are connected and because you're doing wraps and it's not just a simple wire loop, these will not come undone. This is really secure. So now we're gonna grip with our pliers and we're just gonna twist and do our wrappings. Okay, after you've done two, two and a half, whatever you wanna do. I've seen people who do like uh, longer wrappings and they do like five and that's a really pretty look too. So kind of experiment with what you want and then you just trim it. And then you always go back and tuck your ends. And tucking your ends is basically just going back and pinching that wire in. So we made another link to go on this one. Oh, Anita, you've had those wires and didn't know you could use them for the wraps. Yes, you can definitely use them for the wraps. It's really great. I, I know, I, I love, so I know I talk about it a lot, but these, these are the tools I use with every single project. I, I feel like I can do so many different things with them. The only thing I can't do with these is memory wire loops because it would hurt these pliers, but I actually now just use my chain nose pliers for memory wire loops. So I feel like these four tools, I can do everything with. Okay, so how is this in comparison to my other chain? Okay, I think I'm going to do one more link to finish this one. I want to do a different color. So if you see here, I'm kind of alternating the dark colors with the light colors. So I'm going to do one more. So I've already got this here. So I just need to cut a little bit more. And don't worry if it's kinked like this. You're going to be wrapping that. So it's not going to bother the wraps at all. So about two and a half inches again. Yes, this would absolutely work for ankle bracelets. Um, this, like I said, these wraps, they're not going to come undone. And this would be very delicate. As long as you're tucking your ends and you're just squishing that wire into your wraps, it's not going to scratch your skin. So this would be a beautiful ankle bracelet. Okay, so we're just going to do the same thing. And... This is going to be an end one. So let's go ahead. I'll show you how to do it where I just do it with the pliers instead. So I'm just going to grab it. Actually, I would love this color too for an ankle bracelet. It's very um, kind of
and a beachy. Okay, just a few wraps. So you got those wraps and then you're gonna trim it. So the tool, what is the tool called? So this tool here is called a wire looping plier. And it's called a wire looping plier because it has a round nose and a concave nose. If you look at that, you can see, and that round nose just fits into the concave nose and that lets you do the wrap. So that's why it's bending it for you. Yeah, I, um, I must admit I had to do some uh, simple wire loops and wrapped wire loops the other day without this plier. I had to practice. I, I really did because I am so used to using this that my, my loops just weren't looking as good with the round nose plier. So I, I did. I had to practice for a bit and it, it took me a few times to get it right um, just because I have been using this one for so long. Okay, so this is going to be our last link. So same thing and rotate up. I remember when I first started making jewelry, the hardest thing for me was the crimp bead. I could not crimp a crimp bead at all. And I, I ended up in tears on that one. Um, but the second hardest one was the loops. It took me a while to be able to figure out how to make the loops and, and have them, them look good. And then actually I was just watching uh, the Sarah Lovecraft um, live show she did, and it was the wine and chocolate one. And she actually does a loop differently than how I do it. And it was so neat to see. She cuts the wire first. I always cut my wire after for a simple wire loop. And it was really fun to be able to see that. So if you want to watch how she does her simple wire loops, you can go back and watch the archived show that she did. Um, it was the wine and chocolate one it was a bead mix we have. And it was really fun to watch her design and see how she makes her loops. Okay, so we've got our nice length. So this is what we're gonna put together. So we've got the chain pieces pre-cut, we've got our gemstone chain, and we have this. So what we wanna do is we're gonna take one open jump ring and we're gonna open it up. So just a simple jump ring, open it. And now we're going to link on the end chain link to our pieces of chain and our, our gemstone chain and our last chain right here. So we just link those all together. So that's what they look like. And then we're just going to close this jump ring. Okay, so that's close. So those are now all connected. So what we want to do now is we're going to take another jump ring, another open jump ring. And don't forget, if you want to see the exact details on any of these, just click on the little shopping bag icon and that will pull up everything you see on my table, including the tools. So then you can see everything all at once and you can see the exact sizes and all that good stuff. Okay, so I have a little lobster clasp. So I'm gonna put that through my jump ring and then that jump ring I just already attached, I'm gonna link this to. And then we're gonna close it on up. So we have almost finished this. So we've got the lobster, we've got the pretty chains. And don't forget, you could do this in any gemstone you want. This was just the one I picked out. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this flat so that they're not tangled. If you can kind of see that, we're gonna lay that flat. And now I have right here is a closed jump ring. So this is gonna serve as the other half of my clasp. So that's gonna be what the lobster clasp attaches to, but we need one more jump ring right here. And we're just gonna open up the open one Again, the last chain link on all of these. And while we're at it, we're gonna slip on that little closed jump ring. And close it on up. And we have a finished bracelet. So this here, I'm gonna show you how it would clasp. Okay, so we would just go around to here. 
take the little lobster and it would attach on to that closed jump ring. So there you go. You have a really pretty boutique-y looking bracelet that you made using gemstones. And of course, I think everyone, when they see gemstones or they hear gemstones, they instantly think value and quality. And so it's, this would be a really nice gift. Or if you're making and selling jewelry, this would be great as well. I think um, gemstones just instantly kind of heighten the, the perceived value of, of a design. Okay, so that was project number one. So we're gonna do project number two and we're gonna make a necklace. So I'm gonna start with a pre-made chain necklace and I'm gonna show you my favorite trick. Yeah, Joe, it was really fast. Um, I will admit I did pre-make some of those um, chain links to begin with, the little gemstone ones, but it does go really quick for what I think looks like a really nice piece. It looks like a, a nice little designer piece. Aw, thank you for the hearts, guys. Okay, my favorite trick when making this type of necklace um, is I, I clasp my necklace together. It's the pre-made one. So it comes, of course, with all your components. Everything is very solid. So if you are perhaps giving a gift or selling jewelry, it's really nice to know that the structure of this is really intact and strong. So then I go to the midway point. So I just figure out where's the middle and I cut it. So I'm gonna cut my chain necklace in half. So I just put my pliers in there and I cut it. So now what I have is I have two equal lengths with the chain, um, the clasp set in the middle. Okay, so this is, I think, I think I have a 16 inch chain right here and we're gonna add a couple inches of gemstones to it. So it's going to equal 18 inches. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay that down. And what do you guys think? Should I keep going on this color or should I pick out another color? What do you guys think? Should I make it so we have some a match set? Does anyone have a preference? You can always, um, if you, just a reminder, if you're on Facebook watching this right now or you're over on YouTube, pop on over to artbeads.com forward slash live. The link is in the description and then I could see your comments and you could participate when we are able to do these fun things like this. Um, okay, new, Joe says new. Okay, what new one should I do? I kind of have like a pretty turquoise. I have a, a pink, it's a matte pink, or I have a blue. Does anyone have a preference on which one we should open up? Oh, Kathy says match. Oh, continue with neutral, says Barbara. Oh my gosh. And Joe says pink. All right, well, I'm gonna show you well, I don't have two chain necklaces, but I'm going to do neutrals to match when I make it, but then I'm going to show you what the pink looks like created in a chain. So maybe that's like the, oh, two for pink. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to open up the pink because I want to show you what the pink's going to look like when we wrap it, when we do the wire wrapping for the pink, since we're just playing here. Okay, so again, we're going to have our little length. And we just do our wire wrapping. Okay. And we trim it. Oh, good, Joe. Good. I'm glad this is what you want to see. Okay. Yeah, I wish if I had two of these pre-made chain necklaces, which I actually thought I did, um, I was gonna just do both. Okay, so I wanna show you what this pink is gonna look like with the, it turned into the links. Okay, so we've got that one side done. Now, when you're starting out one, you can actually finish both sides. So let me show you, when you're just starting it for the first time, this is not gonna be connected to anything else right now. So we can just, create that little loop, but instead of opening it up, we could do our wire wraps. Okay. And actually, uh, Joe, I'm gonna end up making this one into an earring later in the show. I think that'll be fun. So we'll end up turning the pink into our earring. 
Okay, let's get another length here. And you see, I'm just, I'm just estimating here. It's somewhere between two and a half inches and three inches. So you don't have to be too precise on it. Okay. Okay, and then we're just gonna do our wraps. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we got our little wrapping. And tuck. I didn't used to tuck my wire ends. That was something I think I learned a couple years into jewelry making and it just, I, I don't know why I didn't. I don't know why I never did it, but I think it took another designer telling me that that's what you should do. And then it was like an aha moment of like, wow, I, I really, I need to be doing this. <laughs> Oh, Kathy is asking, how many closed uh, eight millimeter jump rings do you get for that price? I would have to go back and look. Um, I don't have that information on me right now, um, but I know we can find that out for you. If you go to the shopping bag icon and you click on it and then you find the little jump rings in the, in the shopping bag, there should be a picture of them. You can then click on that picture and it will take you right to the product listing. And then that product listing definitely should tell you how many you get for that price. Oh, thank you, Art Beads team. Um, you get a hundred of them. Okay, so we've made... Oh, you know what? I was a little distracted as I was doing this, so I ended up making both sides. Okay, no problem. <laughs> okay, here we go. I made two complete ones, so now I gotta connect them. So I will go ahead and grab another length, and we're gonna make one that's gonna connect both of these. So this will be fun to show. Okay, so we got our wire, gonna do our loops. Okay, so I did that one. Okay, we're gonna add our bead. And now before I forget, I'm not gonna finish this one. I'm gonna connect it to one of these guys that's already finished. I do like the pink. Joe, that was a really good idea. It was nice to show something other than the neutral. Okay, so start the wrap, pull it down so it's a loop. Now we're gonna open up that loop and slip on one of the ones we just made. Okay, and now we're gonna finish our wrappings. Okay. Oh, thanks, Becky. It's good to see you, happy holidays. I really hope everyone did have a great day yesterday and still having a good day today. I know our party is going to continue later today. I have family coming over again, and we're going to play board games, and my husband is making um, chicken and dumplings. It is our traditional um, Christmas meal. He either makes it on Christmas Eve or he makes it on um, like Christmas Day or the day after, but sometime during the Christmas season, he makes homemade chicken and dumplings. So that is the plan. And it's always nice because he's cooking and I'm not. So I get to kind of sit back and relax, which is fun. And he's a good cook, but he always, I don't know if he thinks he's not a good cook or what, but he doesn't cook that often. But when he does, it's so good. Okay, so another gemstone, and these are definitely gonna be turned into earrings. So I'm gonna show you in a few minutes how to turn these into earrings, and then I'll go back and I will make the necklace um, using the neutrals. Okay, so now we're gonna do this side. And you can really see how these pliers save a lot of time with this particular project, um, because we're making so many loops. Okay, so now we're gonna connect it to the two that we already made. Okay, 
and then we'll finish up these loops. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna connect this one here and then I'm gonna add a little decoration at the bottom and an earring hook. So it'll be five long. So it's a really nice long dangly earring. Again, it's kind of that boutique look. Um, if you go and you look through the store windows or you're shopping at boutiques, you'll notice that they've got these nice wire wrapped gemstone earrings and they usually charge a lot of money for them. So this is really fun to be able to just do it ourselves. Okay, so because I want this to link together, I'm going to put this one on here right now. Just slip it on there. And now we're gonna do our wraps. And trim it. Okay, slip on our last gemstone. And you can alternate gemstones too. You could have it go like pink, blue, pink, blue, or you can really do whatever you want. There's a lot of these Dakota stones in the four millimeter size, which is nice because you can pick your favorite gemstone or your favorite color. So whatever it is that you're really going for. I love the idea of making this an anklet bracelet. That was such a good idea. Okay. All right, so we're gonna open that one up, slide this guy on. and do our twisting. Okay. Oh, thank you, Christine. That's really nice to hear. It is my absolute favorite part of what I do is the teaching, so thank you. Actually, I come from a family of teachers, um, elementary school teachers mainly, but my mom, my dad, both my uncles, my grandfather, my great grandma, they're all teachers. <laughs> My grandma actually used, my great grandma used to teach actually up in Alaska um, ages and ages ago, but that was kind of where the teaching tradition started. Okay, so I've got five of these right here. And so you can see how those pink ones look wire wrapped. So just those nice little delicate wraps. If you joined us a little late, what I'm using is the 24 gauge wire. You can also go ahead and rewatch the show. All of these shows are saved at artbeads.com forward slash live. There's all the archived shows of mine, of Becky Dolls, of Sarah Lovecrafts, of Tammy Hahnemann's. So you can always go back and rewatch any of those shows later too. Okay, so let's put the earring hook on it first. So I just have this really pretty simple um, earring hook, but I chose it because it's got the wire wrapping. So I thought that would be nice for consistency. So just open that up and slip it on and then close it back up and just kind of sometimes give it a little pinch. You just wanna make sure it's there. So there we've got this. Now you could end it in a couple ways. You could end it by taking like a ball head pin putting your little bead onto the ball head pin and then doing some wire wrapping and just connecting it to that end one, which, you know what, I might do. I actually really like how that looks, but I wanted to show you another option somewhere on my table. I have this charm chain right here, and these are little gold leaves. So what you could also do is you could cut off, this is two inches, so you see how many leaves you get for two inches? And then what you can do is you can cut it. So it's connected with jump rings. So let's say you wanted two jump rings worth of leaves. You could cut on the third jump ring. Did I cut on the third one? Where is it? Yep, there it is. Okay, so if I cut on the third one, first off, a couple little leaves fall off, which is fun. Well, thank you guys, everyone, for the nice comments. It's really nice to hear. It's, it's making my day, so thank you. So we've just got this little dangle. So we could 
just put this little dangle of leaves on the bottom. We also just have this little leaf that popped up. We could just do a little leaf. That actually could be really cute too. We could have one little leaf hanging from the bottom of our earring. I don't know, I'm, I'm starting to like that too. So we could just connect that one little leaf. You could connect a little dangle of leaves or you could just do this with the little um, head pin. So I think I'm gonna do the head pin. I'm gonna go for the simple one on this one. But you have lots and lots of different options. And I might hear my family coming home. I hear something happening. It's either a delivery at the front door or are my kids coming home. Okay, because of course they're off school this week because it's the holidays. Okay, so I made that little loop. Now, again, I don't wanna close it up just yet. I wanna open this up and this is thicker. This is a thicker wire um, because it's that ball head pin, but I'm just gonna slip that on there close it on up and then this is also reminding me why I love the 24 gauge wire because this thicker wire is a lot harder to wrap there we go okay trim it and tuck it okay so we made our little earring so it's just a pretty little strand of gemstones and I don't know why I want to you know, I'm going to put this little leaf up top. I don't know why. I want that little leaf somehow in my design. Again, it's that little boutique touch of just something unexpected. So I'm just going to take this little leaf from this little leaf charm that popped off when I cut the jump ring, and I'm just going to put it up there. So it's just got a little something extra happening. You can put it in the front or the back. Yeah, so there we go. We have an earring, and you would just make two of those to make your matched pair. And you can make them as long or as short as you like. Again, you could just do this pink. And let's see what the pink would look like with the gold chains. So you could have done the pink in with the gold chains as well for a pop of color. So that could have been really pretty too, or any gemstone that you want. But that is how you make that. So that's how you would make one type of earring. And of course, you could play around. You could actually hang this from an earring hook and just have a couple little uh, wire wrapped gemstones at the base of it as well. So a lot of different things you can do with just this basic technique and a few extras. Okay, we're gonna go back to our necklace now because we made a necklace, I mean, sorry, we made a bracelet, we made an earring, and off camera, I'll go ahead and I'll make the match pair and then I'll probably be wearing it at another show. You can um, catch me here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. I would do something different each week. Okay, so we've got our necklace. Again, it's got the clasp. We know it's even because we found the midway point. So now we're just going to wire wrap a few more of these neutral gemstones. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it as a focal in the middle of our necklace. Oops, sorry guys if I tap that camera real quick. All right, I need a little bit more of my wire. So I'm just gonna pull that off the spool. Trim it. Okay. Okay, so just cut it. And I'm gonna start building this as if this was some gemstone chain. So I'm gonna find the end chain link and have it ready because I'm gonna connect it directly to it. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead, make a little loop. And before we do our wrappings on this one, I'm just gonna open it up ever so slightly. Take the end chain link So that end chain link is right there. Oh, thank you, Julie. You know, it gets easier as you do it. The, you know, give yourself some grace the first couple wraps you do, but once you've done four or five, you're just gonna be wire wrapping these like crazy. And, and it's a lot of practice. Like once you've done a couple of these, all that practice adds up and you'll be, you'll be creating these in no time. And they're fun. I think they're fun because it's jewelry that comes together pretty quickly. 
I do a lot of bead weaving and bead embroidery, and those are really long projects, which are great. But sometimes you like to be able to just sit down and in one kind of quick session, just be able to finish a couple pieces of jewelry. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna do some wraps. So that is now very, very securely attached to our chain. That is not going anywhere. If perhaps you're a maker who is selling your jewelry, I really like this technique because you know all the points of construction are really solid. So you don't have to worry about the integrity of your jewelry um, for, the, for the end customer who's gonna buy it. Okay, let's put on one of these pretty gemstones. Again, I really like the mix here that I'm using just because it is um, different colors. There are different colors. Okay, so we put that one on. Gonna rotate it up. Okay, now on this one, we're gonna make all our wraps. So you can either hold it again. So the, the chain does get in the way a little bit, so you just kinda have to hold it back a little bit when you do your wrappings because it does tend to wanna just, you know, with gravity, it just wants to fall below and it sometimes gets a little tangled, but there we go. We've got our little wraps. Okay, and get that wire tucked. Please don't skip this step. I, I know it, it takes a little bit longer, but you'll really appreciate not having scratchy wires. Okay, so we've got that right there. Now we're gonna do a couple more. So let me find my wire. Okay, we're gonna start it again. And then before we do our wraps, we will connect it to the one we already did. Okay, and now we're gonna do our wraps. Oh, thank you guys for the hearts. And if you wanna share this with anyone, there's a share button. So it's a little arrow and you can share this with your friends if you think they might like to learn this as well. Okay, so we've got that. I'm gonna add another gemstone. That'll be the second one on here. So, so now on this end, we are gonna complete all the wraps. And you do see I alternate between just holding it with my chain nose um, and then also holding it with the wire wrapping. It's kind of whatever I just feel like in the moment. They both work really great for that. Okay, so now we've got two attached to the chain. So we're just building it. And I don't know, uh, let me see how this is gonna look. See if I wanna do just a really petite little focal. You could do three in the middle, you could do five. I, I tend to like to do an odd number just cause I think odd numbers are sometimes really pleasing uh, in jewelry design. So I've got that, let me, maybe we'll just do three in the middle, three little ones. So we'll pick a color that we haven't used before. So maybe this yellow would be nice right there, or we could do the white. There's like a whitish one. I think we'll do the yellow. Okay, so we just need one more piece of wire. So grab it, twist it, or I should say bend it. Okay, and we need to attach this one to the ones we've already done. Okay, link that one down. And so you're, can do the three or you could do five or you could do a bunch of them. You can make half the necklace gemstones. You know, you can do whatever you want on this or you could just do one. You have one really beautiful gemstone that you do this technique with where you cut that chain necklace in half and you have a beautiful focal gemstone. Oh, 
Hi, Fran. Thank you for joining us. We are using 24 gauge artistic wire. So this is what we're using. So it's a nice, easy to use wire. Okay, and tuck that end. And Fran, you can always go back and rewatch this. It is gonna be saved. So if you want, you can uh, go back and watch us make the bracelet. So we made a bracelet and we made an earring already. So you can go back and rewatch um, the replay. And it's at artbeads.com forward slash live, where it's all saved. Okay, so this last one we do a little bit differently. I mean, nothing that we haven't kind of already seen, but you just um, go slowly and don't forget. Like I was thinking to myself, I'm probably going to forget to do this. But here, we just do the normal curving over with the wire looping pliers. All right, so let's see. Let's see, I'm gonna grab my chain nose. There they are. We're gonna open this one up. Now we're gonna go to the other side of our chain and we are going to just slip on that last chain link on this side. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna secure that guy by doing our wire wrappings. Oh, yes, look at the mat. There's a bead next to the leaves, one bead with a cluster of leaves. That would be really cute, yes. Absolutely, that would be so cute. One bead, either color, with, oh, you can kind of see it right here. One bead with a cluster of leaves would be so pretty, yes. All right, so here we go. We're gonna do the wire wrappings to finish this necklace. Okay, so once we've done that, we are going to go ahead and trim it. Right there. And for the last time, tuck our wire ends. And we have a necklace. So there's our focal. So we have the focal to our necklace. So it would just hang like that. It would be really delicate. So it'd be a nice, nice, delicate necklace. Let me like try to move some of this away so we can just lay it down. All right, so pretty quickly and easily, we've made a necklace, a bracelet, and one earring, and then it'll take a little bit longer. You just go back and make the second earring. And I really do like the idea of just doing the pretty gemstone chain with a just one, not gemstone, the pretty leaf chain with just one gemstone on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip my camera back up so I can say goodbye. But thank you guys for watching here and being part of it and giving me feedback and ideas too. That's great. I love your guys' suggestion of, of this leaf one and then the ankle bracelet and then using the pink as well. Really fun to do this with you guys. Okay, let me flip my camera back up. All right, All right there we are. Oh, we'll get straight. All right, thank you guys, that was really fun. Let me see if I can hold up some of the pieces kind of against me so you can see them in scale. So there would be the little gemstone necklace. And then here is the bracelet that we made. So you can kind of see how that looks. And then last but not least, the gemstone earring. And I really like long dangle earrings. I'm gonna take this one off. Okay, so you can see I really like it when they're long and dangly. That's just personally that's something I like to do. And then let me show you if I can do up close. I have this earring off already. This is the wire wrapping, same exact technique, but with prestige crystal. So I just use bicones and these are four millimeter bicones. And I just put three at a time. So that's another thing. You don't have to just do a single link. You could put multiple beads and wire wrap them and make like a nice little chain as well. So thank you again for joining me. This was really fun to do on the day after Christmas. I got to play while well, my husband's gonna be cooking. So that was fun too. Um, thank you guys. I loved interacting with you. I love seeing your comments. I love seeing your hearts. Thank you. Don't forget to share this video and you can share it with your friends. Maybe they'd like to do some of this wonderful jewelry making as well in the new year. We're all looking into the new year and new things we wanna do. So that's really fun. So thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for everyone, Becky. 
for joining me today. Have a great rest of the day. Have a very, very happy new year. I will see you on, I think it's January 2nd, so next Tuesday, and I'll be able to say happy 2024. So thank you guys. Thank you, Christine. Thank you guys. Have a great holiday.